Exploited, another episode I love. Spoilers for everything live action X Men leading up to and including this episode. Uh, yeah, the show is rated TV 14, so this episode B, let's dive right in. So, yeah, we open on a rally where they evoke 715, and I know they call him Montez. He's giving Vivek Ramaswamy, and let's see, yeah, um, I don't think anybody's ever accused the show of being subtle. He's straight up, like, Heil Hitler's at the very end of, of the speech, like, wow, and then it is confirmed, yes, this is yet another flashback, and Esme was working undercover to to get, yeah, very, very clever there. And she was hoping to sit in on a donor meeting and, you know, the guy's like, okay, as long as you don't say anything, which we already know, she, she doesn't need to say anything. She's gonna, it's gonna be just fine with just listening and yeah she gets some warnings via telepathy which based on the end of the episode maybe those are the other two you know of the yeah um the the ending let's see um yeah the the, the very ending of this episode identifies them as the frost triplets so I think that's what I will continue to call them. And let's see. Yeah, and back in the in the present. I like the detail that Polaris says, you know, don't call me crazy. You know, the she probably has been you know, there's there's probably some mutant haters that have said that she, you know, what she, what's really going on here, she has this mental health condition, so she's very, you know, sensitive about that good little detail. And yeah, um, attacking Sentinel services does sound like a very risky course of action. And... Let's see. Yeah, good scenes with the the you know there's yeah we see the we see the Struckers in the the yeah the Strucker teens in the in this adjoining cells and yeah you know this thing of you know maybe maybe we should have used our powers is you know that's where Andy is at. And, yeah, um, Dreamer has been claiming that, yeah, she made up a story for how she ended up in, in the, yeah. So, so yeah, ultimately she was captured. You know, I wasn't entirely sure if she was going to be able to get out of, but no, she, they, they caught her, but they didn't, like, shoot her. And... Yeah, you know, Jace, uh, you know, he points out, last time we saw each other, you made me forget the last days of my daughter, so now I lost her twice. You know, and, and understandably, she apologizes, and he says, you're sorry? And I just want there to be an outtake where she's like, I'm glad, I, I don't know what you want from me, dude. And, let's see, yeah, and, you know, he threatens that she's going to go in the Hound program. And, let's see, yeah, really love the, the sass of, of Clarice. You know, if, at first she's, she's trying to, you know, the, okay, so you were in there because you needed a bathroom? When you gotta go, you gotta go. Look... <laughs> I know you think that you can escape again, you know, and, you know, last time we were, you know, and she's like, last time I made you guys look like chumps, like it was easy. 
And let's see. Yeah, and and Dr. Campbell partway through his transformation into Two-Face demands, you know, Andy and and Lauren and you know again it's it's very clear there's definitely something you know he yeah the fact that he knows about the the Fenris twins yeah clearly he has plans there and yeah uh Esme talks the you know the two adult struckers that are still alive into trying to talk to to Jace and you know yeah very she's she really nails the manipulation in in this episode you know that's <laughs> X-Men comics there's a there's a bit of a history with you know if you if you're dealing with a, a female telepath you know to, even if you think even if right now she's good you may want to watch her you know there's the the yeah so again the yeah there's there's the frost triplets there's Jean Grey you know Emma Frost. I feel like there's at least one more, but I can't quite place it. But just, yeah, it's a it's a whole thing. Honestly, it probably originated as one of those misogynist things of like you know women manipulating men. But so so yeah, that's obviously awful. They do make for really cool stories. I suppose whether or not that evens out or not is is up for debate. And let's see. Again, I would have a huge problem with it if this was every female character here. But most of the female characters on this show are, you know, three-dimensional characters who are not inherently, like, evil. And I think that in the long term, like, certainly, you know, once we saw that flashback of the two months earlier thing, that, yeah, that's... <laughs> I can appreciate why she's so determined that she's willing to use these means. And let's see. Yeah. Um the the Strucker kids are put in the the um the testing room made from adamantium and we you know so yeah, like Wolverine's claws and skulls in general, and they even mention <clears throat> we got it from British Columbia. There was a lab, you know. So, so yeah, straight up Strucker's lab from X Men Two, very nicely done. And let's see. Um, yeah, we get the the yeah. So the Strucker adults arrive at. Jace and you know Caitlin, you know gets out a little revolver, you know and and says you know the first the first time a gun was put in my hand was by my father when I was four. That was a mistake. We buried him a week later. And <laughs> and then Esme goes to the others and say, ah, oh, so you know the Struckers. I mean sometimes. When I'm close to someone and they feel something really intently, how much do you come? Come on, Polaris, anytime, please s stop me so I could just you know because she's really laying it on thick. Love it, and yeah, you know, <laughs> like she's on on one hand, like Esme is playing on you know they they don't completely trust like the the Strucker adults still don't completely trust. The mutant underground and the mutant underground still doesn't completely trust them. So, because it is like you, you, you know, stop to think. Wait, well, really? Would they really do that? You know, but yeah, if it's you know nature of bigotry, you stop thinking rationally about the people you're bigoted to, towards, against whatever. And 
let's see the yeah and you know Pola points out that you know Jace is definitely holding back you know the day has not been fine you know the math adds up you may not be able to rem remember our daughter but I can still count and <laughs> I like the thing about you know so you'd, you'd make a hot widow <laughs> And let's see, yeah. So the the um, the Struckers come in and and talk. You know, John Connor leads the the kids off into another room. Schwarzenegger starts carving you know the skin off his arm, and and you know Reed tries to talk to Jace father to father, which I do really appreciate. You know, yeah, they do have a gun, but they're not saying, you know, we will shoot you. They're they're saying, listen to us. The gun is so you listen. And let's see. Yeah, and and Polaris and Marcos, you know, talk about war and and Marcos draws a direct comparison to, you know, this is like when I was back with the the cartel, you know, I've seen too many people die fighting pointless wars. So, and and again, it's you know, Polaris again says, you know, I want better for our child. It's, you know, great characterization again, and let's see, right, and and yeah, Do Dr. Campbell asks the the Strucker kids, you know. Show me what you can do, and again, I just, I I hope there's a you know an, an outtake where the the two of them burst into song or something. And I did not at all expect them. I I for the show to kill off Dreamer and for Campbell to you know, but that's that he really does not care about it because. Dreamer knows more than Clarice and the the Strucker kids about the mutant underground. So, you know, he really, truly, the one thing he cares about here is the Fenris power. The, everything else is is secondary. You know, he's he's obsessed, basically. And let's see. Yeah, and and you know the 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 kids do agree to to use their powers. Right. Also, really appreciate the the weight that the show gives it. There's like slow mo, and we get close ups of everyone's reactions and such. But yeah, um, the kids start using their powers together, and you know one of the the techs working there, you know, talking to Cam, was like, um, should we maybe? cut this off now and you know Campbell is like don't worry about it that room is indestructible which fantastic good thinking you know very smart very very scientific quick question did anybody tell the Struckers that and let's see yeah and and back with with Jace you know the the Struckers leave and he's about to, you know, call Sentinel Services, and and Paula says, you know, what are you doing in our daughter's name? You know, really powerful. And also, I, I quite appreciate, you know, earlier when, you know, Kate said, you know, when to to Jace, when you came into my home with a gun, you know, I this is how I felt. And we get a brief little, you know, it, it cuts to Paula, and she's like, I didn't know that. I, you know, that that's, and, and yeah, that kind of changes things, you know, that's, yeah. So, let's see. Yeah, and, and Lauren feels that the dreamer died for nothing. And... Yeah, um, Dr. Campbell, you know, they, they got it, and he says, we, we may now have our solution to the mutant problem, 
which is sounding very like final solution E. And let's see. Yeah, um, Jace goes there to, to get the, the mutants back, and, and you know, Campbell's like, we had a deal, and, and Jace is like, yeah, and we don't anymore. <laughs> you know, like, Campbell really, he's, he's, he can't see straight because he's so obsessed with the Fenris power. You know, he, it didn't occur to him, you know, yeah, like, it's, you know, th at, at the end of the day, if two people agree on something, and the only thing that holds both of them to it is that they both agree, then if one of those people changes their mind, the other one doesn't have a whole, you know, because it's not legal. What they did is outside of the law. This is not like if, you know, uh, let's see, let's say that Jace just, like, yeah, let's say that he went to a place that he w where where they had mutant prisoners, but he didn't have jurisdiction or something, and he tried to just remove the prisoners. That wouldn't work. But no, this is these are his prisoners. He agreed with Campbell to to let Campbell use them for a while, but this is his, th th you know. So, yeah, very very nicely done. And I will admit, I did not see that coming. And let's see. Yeah, and the Reed, uh, the Struckers, Reed and, and Kate, learn about Esme's lies. You know, she really, she was so confident that she would be able to make it out on top of this manipulation that she d didn't, you know, yeah, it was just a matter of time before they talked again, you know, but yeah. And she tases Marcos and engages her own plan. And we get yet another glorious scene of a telepath just, you know, wreaking havoc with their powers, which, you know, several of the movies feature very nicely. Yeah, I guess this is, I think this is the first time we've gotten one on this show. So, yeah. Really, really great to see, and yeah, you know, I, I think, uh, I guess his name was just Ed, that's what um, Jace refers to him as, you know, she takes him over, makes him turn off the, the collars, there's a, there's some gunshots from, from the, the prison transport bus, and, you know, yeah, Ed shoots himself, one guy like goes into his car you know yeah the the sergeant scott has given you an order will you obey that order and yeah take take a grenade pull the pin hold it and then throw it and once she's completely taken over esme struts really badass and yeah, we end, we, we close the episode on the Frost triplets saying, time to go boys and girls, the fun's just starting. Very, very cool, very creepy. And yeah, so some IMDb trivia for this episode. Let's see. And yeah, uh, someone else pointed out the thing about adamantium. Oh, right, yeah. Ultron's outer shell is also adamantium in some of the comics. And. Right, the. the Yeah. Um, it's revealed in this episode that Dreamers, or Beautiful Dreamer, she's known in the comic book, her full name is Sonia Simonson. It is significant that they chose that name because in the comic. The comic book we only hear beautiful dreamers name as Sonia, but the writers of the episode chose Simonson because it is it is the last name of Louise Simonson who co-created the character Beautiful Dreamer in the comic book. Love that. Love when they pay respect to the original. And yeah, someone else pointed out the thing about the, the compound from British Columbia's where Wolverine got his adamantium skeleton. So, let's see, right, the Frost Triplets, 
see, I don't know if that were, uh, let's just, yeah, um, I feel like I've heard that at least one of those two words, possibly both of them, is now considered ableist. Uh, but yeah, they are also in the in the comic books originally quintuplets known as five in one. They have a psychic link were protégés of Emma Frost, the former White Queen of the Hellfire Club, later headmaster of the Xavier Institute for Higher Learning. Two of them died, and only three remain. They were created to be a living weapon by the Weapon Plus program. As of 2019, they are back to five. And let's see. I think that might Yeah. Um really love that yeah, so so okay, here it is verbatim almost verbatim. You think you're gonna escape light last time? You got lucky once, won't happen again. Actually, luck had nothing to do with it. I made you go you guys look like fools. It's a pretty good skill. And see. I think that might be <clears throat> um, yeah, a lot of great lines from the episode are in the I'm to be quotes section and yeah uh, I yes tomorrow I will do another episode really looking forward to yeah we're getting very close to the finale let's see what is that three more episodes I guess three episodes left yeah um, really they're they're building very nicely You've talked to him before, right? When he interrogated me. Okay, look, I'm I'm not saying it's gonna be easy. 